part of that reason is because I had a vivid, very vivid, like too vivid, extremely vivid dream about my ex. It's black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Yo, what's going on? Back with another one. For you guys that are wondering, yes, I'm still alive. I haven't OD'd. <laughs> All jokes aside, that's not that funny, but I actually haven't, and uh, <laughs> I'm fine. I'm here today uh, to have a Quizno sub. Actually, 18 inches <laughs> of Quizno sub. I went ahead and ordered a 12 and a 6, um, and the 12 is like a honey mustard chicken, bacon, Swiss type thing, and then the other is like a classic Italian with all the meats. So um, let's hop into this and uh, just get to chatting. Honestly, I'm just going to free ball this one today. I'm just feeling very whatevs. Like I just don't want to have to like plan a thing and whatever. Like I just kind of want to express myself and my truth and my feelings. So this also, by the way, this bag. In the realm of like ASMR bags. If that's a thing, this is like a nice, it's got that real like 0.25 millimeter thickness, you know? And it's got that light in the wind. <sighs> Grocery store bags are a little more crinkly. This Quiznos bag, however, it's like the cashmere of plastic bags. Let's say that. What we're working with first things first working with the monster that's a 12 and we got the six you know summer 12 summer six it's just how life goes you know some people get more lucky in the 12 also cashmere wrapping like this is way less offensive than subway in terms of audible sound and this sticker's a nice touch too. Subway does not do the sticker. Quiznos used to be considered like the higher grade of sub, which is weird because this costs 10 bucks. And I'm pretty sure any foot long with chicken at Subway, chicken and bacon actually, I should say, would cost definitely 10 or over. So maybe Quiznos came back down to earth and was like, we're not that premium anymore, or Subway's just hijacking those prices, you know? Let's put those two here. All right, now let's find out what this Italian's about. It's looking pretty good so far. I do like their bread. I like, it's, it looks more artisan, artisanal. That's just a word for hipster. So the bread looks more hipster. On this Quiznos, I do like the sesame. Because this was the Italian one, they offered me Italian herb and cheese bread. I figured I'd have to get that. I mean, you have your choice, but I figured that seemed more appropriate for the Italian sub. Mr. Microphone, he gets into position. And to be honest, I'm first things first, I'm a honey mustard chicken kind of guy. I'm looking to investigate the scenario, but you know me, AKA Mr. Lettuce Fiend. Definitely got to get that lettuce back in there. Iceberg being my, my most favorite. And of course I had to make my own honey mustard because I knew it just wouldn't be enough. So. Let's smother that. I really got to give you guys the exact recipe for that honey mustard too, by the way, because I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I will say I have perfected the honey mustard recipe. And I will say that it is Top notch. And on par with some of the best out there. Mm. 
Yeah, that's really good. Twas got chicken. Bacon. Swiss cheese. Tomato lettuce. Red onion. Honey mustard. And then the sesame seed bread. And I will say, there's just something about toasted sesame seeds that's like, such a flavor pop. Just adds such a nice little extra. Flavor pop. So good. I ordered this off Uber Eats and like, I shit you not, it came in like seven minutes. Granted, this is right like two, two blocks away from me. But even in the time that I placed the order, to like the time that it was like your order has been picked up and it's on the way by so and so to me that didn't even seem like enough time to actually make the subs it's like I felt like a magician had these cooked up and ready and waiting knowing what I was going to get Y'all mind readers out there at Quiznos. I am a little bit bummed about just because of my love for pepperoncini pepperoncinis. <clears throat> the Peter North of Peppers. Squirters. Is that with with Quiznos? You usually, when you get when you eat there, you have access to unlimited pepperoncinis and pickles. And I thought they'd maybe include a side. Not the case. Which is very interesting to me, but I don't know, understandable, I guess. Lots of people don't think to pack that up in a delivery, you know? Let's have a look on the interior. This one's actually looking better than I expected it to, to be, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks great. It's got tomato lettuce, red onion, seems to be a theme, trend, black olives, lettuce, and then it has pepperoni, ham, and capicola. I don't know if you guys, hopefully you can get in there. Looks good. However, again, I'm a sauce pervert, so... Let's go ahead and pervert this thing with uh, some ranch. Italian grandmothers rolling in their grave, but hey, it's fine with me. I ain't got a Nona, you know what I'm saying? I did have a Nana though, however, is what we called her. Really good. The red wine vinaigrette cuts through nice. Those olives actually really 
for someone who doesn't really like black olives, those are making it pop. And the meat is actually like super tender. Which, I don't know why I wasn't expecting that, but it really is. I guess this is relative to like a grinder. That's what they call like classic Italian subs, I think in the States or in like Jersey and shit. I gotta be honest with you guys, you might be a little mad with me. But I had a whole, like, plan today, for today's video instead of this to be, like, a beautiful cooking segment with all the nice sounds and all the nice editing and all that. And while I was at work last night, I like went across to the grocery store, got all the goods that I needed for the video. And it was gonna be like steak, potatoes, asparagus, nice and fancy, all done up proper. And then just like life happened to me. <laughs> and I just like, You know, I had a bunch of days of work and just, you know, I've just been having really shitty sleep. And I had a whole plan to like get up at a certain time and do something, like get it started and get everything going, but I slept in, I woke up late, but which was fine with me because I needed to sleep. Sometimes you just gotta let yourself have that because it's not good to deprive your body of, of the sleep that you need. And I just, I didn't wake up hungry. I didn't wake up motivated to do that video. I just wanted to do like, like I wasn't craving it anymore. It was like in the 40 year old virgin when Steve Carell is talking about making egg salad and you like plan to make egg salad and you go and make egg salad and then by the end of it you don't even want to eat the egg salad. That's how I felt about the steak video. I'm going to do it tomorrow because again now I have a few days off which is nice. So I mean it's coming. That food's not going to waste. It's in the fridge, ready and waiting. Man, this is so good. But I just woke up like, not in the mood. <laughs> And if I'm being like turbo on a super real, um, part of that reason is because I had a vivid, very vivid, like too vivid, extremely vivid dream about my ex. For those of you don't who of you who don't know who I mean by saying ex, just do a little investigative research on my channel and you should be able to figure it out. Yeah, why do I always have such an itchy nose? So annoying. Um, had a super, like my subconscious just kicked me in the ass. And this had like a way too vivid dream. Where like a lot of, there was a lot of dialogue that was had a lot of like realizations between each other in the dream, but like it's so weird that like she doesn't actually like exist in real life now to me or whatever. But in the dream, like we had like actually like some deep conversations, like about being broken up and shit. But we kind of 
had like an old connection. And in the dream, we like physically touched, like we hugged and stuff. And it was just so fucking real. Like it was so intensely real. And, uh, you know, like almost in the dream, like some tears were had and I woke up and I was just, you know, when you wake up from a dream that's so real and then you wake up in real life and you're like, oh, oh, oh yeah, that's not real. That's just kind of what happened. I just woke up and I was like, I was like, shit, that wasn't real. That felt so real. And part of me was like, it was kind of like, it had more resolve to it. So it felt like it was nice, even though at the end of this dream, like, it wasn't like, oh, we get back together or anything like that. It was just like, there was like some res more resolve than I have now currently. So I don't know. That's kind of the reason I wanted it to be real. But the dream was also just very sad too, in the sense of like, we were talking about just like she's just talking about like how in the dream she was talking about how she's like just got back from like Thailand and like how she's so happy and like this new person and doing all these great things that she couldn't do with me And I'm sure, I don't know, that's probably true to some extent, but I just remember that aspect of the dream really made me feel kind of shitty and sad because around this time last year, like her birthday is in, in November, but we like went on that vacation and You guys didn't know it through here. Couldn't tell through here, but... And actually making these videos was one of the only things that helped me in my situation, but... I was, like, dealing with some crazy bad anxiety. Like, really, really, really bad. Off camera. And I just remember it was right around, well, it was all through and around that trip, but even before and after. And I essentially ruined that vacation together, like for her birthday. And I carry a lot of guilt with me about that. So I didn't like mean to, it just sort of happened and I didn't want to be like a burden, but like anybody who's been through like extreme anxiety when you like, when you suffer from like obsessive, irrational, but very destructive and very seemingly real thoughts that like create symptoms in your body that feel real will know that if you, especially if you're feeling like that, that sucks, but then you gotta get, well, go on a plane, you're gonna go to a fucking like third world country where like there's no doctor in near sight and no medical care and it's expensive. And it's just, it puts extra toll on like your, on your uh, situation, on the state that you're in. And those were all factors when we went on our vacation. It just, it made me trip out even more. So I had a really hard time like being in the moment and letting go and enjoying myself because I was essentially a nervous wreck the entire time. And that really, in that, that time frame, that really put a strain between us and 
So to have a dream about her talking about like how she's like had so much fun in Thailand and like with her new guy and all this shit. But like, I don't know, that's not even real, but it just happened in my brain. In my subconscious was trying to kill me, but that's just like your brain, like, like reminding me of that guilt and like, so I woke up. Like, feeling really shitty, feeling really guilty, sad, empty, like, just bought, like, annoyed that that would even happen. Because, like, you could be doing fine, and all of a sudden, like, you're, like, your subconscious or dreaming or, like, whatever, memories and shit, all of a sudden mess you up. So I just woke up feeling a whole bunch of emo- emotions and I was just completely deflated with my motivation to do anything that was great, like to cook a whole video and like film it all and take all that time to be like like finesse and <laughs> edit and all that stuff. Because I was just kind of like torn down in that moment. So, I was like, I just want to order something easy, sit down, speak my thoughts, speak my mind. Maybe give something these guys can relate to, but <clears throat> that being said, I've needed to do a video on anxiety and how I've, like, what I've dealt with personally and how I've dealt with it and all that stuff and I really want to do it, but I almost think it's so serious of a topic that I can't do it while I'm eating. I think I just need to make it like a whole video of itself, of its own, of just me talking about it. If you guys want that, I don't know, but I'm also scared to do it because I know how those things work with anxiety and obsessive thoughts and how there's triggers and stuff that can like send you right back into the into the wormhole, the sunken place, the, the terrible area that you don't want to be. And I'm just like a little scared, not for myself, but for like maybe somebody viewing it to hear it. Or like to, for me to say what did it to me, like it might trigger something for somebody else and then they might go into it. And it's like a terrible place to be. So it like scares me to want to talk about it because I don't want to like be the catalyst for somebody's terrible anxiety adventure but I also want to talk about it so that I can help people to understand it what it is how to get better how to beat it how to avoid it in the first place you know shit like that all those aspects so yeah, I don't know. I'm just a little conflicted when it comes to that. If I'm being totally honest. I can't believe I ate almost 18 inches. Pause. I think that's to say that Quiznos buns are less heavy. I feel like Subway's buns, like a 12 inch, Something about those buns kicks your ass a little more. Or rather, your stomach. I want to keep pushing to finish, but I kind of, I'm just at that point where I just know I've had enough. Yeah, that's going to do it for me. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the realness on that, a little more relaxed demeanor, maybe a little, a little more depressed or something. I'm not really sure. I'm not actually depressed. I just, you know, woke up in a kind of shitty scenario. But everything will be all good. I just have to 
keep doing my my tasks, my things, keep on my trajectory, on my missions. You know, just be very calculated in my steps, which I'm being. And, uh, you know, time goes on, things move forward, you grow. Or you should grow if you don't, if you if you let these things bother you and defeat you and you say woe is me and you don't try to grow, then yeah, you might you might die. You might end up in that soil six feet deep instead of twelve feet flourish, you know? So it's okay to you know, be affected a little bit time to time, let yourself feel these things. But also, uh, just realize that, you know, this too shall pass. Everything is temporary. Life itself. Nothing is permanent. And, uh, you know, put one foot in front of the other and just keep going. So, that's what I'll leave you with today. Uh, until the next one, eat good, live well, stay true. Peace.